Hey, Josh here. Hey, and this is Mike. And we are Real Dead. And today we have a special guest today, and his name is Sean Clark. Hey, Sean, how's it going, man? Just dandy. <laughs> nice to be home on a Friday, which is rare for me. Yeah, yeah that's that's one thing we're going to ask is about the number of conventions and stuff you're doing here in a little bit. But uh, we had met Sean a couple of weeks ago when we were down in Atlanta. It was Josh's first convention he's ever been to. It was my yep. second. Wow. Uh, so we're kind of newbies at the whole convention thing. We've loved horror movies for a long time. But uh, Josh, you had a good time down there, right? At Mad Monster? Yeah, it was great. Uh, main reason I went is for the Screamcast, but also I met some other people that I was, was looking forward to meeting um, as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was great. And I got to, and I did chat with Sean for uh, very quickly because I knew he was busy, but it was nice. Yeah, it was cool. Um, Sean, I mean, a lot of people know you. I, I, I think I said something to you, and I know Josh knew something about your channel, uh, Malfunk yep. Sean. And the Horus Holograms, I'd seen stuff like that for years. Yes. I love the Halloween stuff. I actually love it all. But the Halloween stuff, I'm a big Michael Myers fan. But um, can you just tell us a little bit about how you, you know, how you got into horror? I mean, you know, I know you've been asked this question a million times, but what got you into horror to start with? And then, you know, all the way kind of what your professional career has been up to the point what your career is now. Damn, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> that might be 59 uh, minutes, right? <laughs> yeah. You sure you want to take up the whole show with that one? A uh, <laughs> uh, uh, quick version. Um, my parents were just big horror fans, I think. Well, I don't know if they were. They were just young. They they had me when I, I think my mom was 17. My dad was 18. So they were young. And, you know, they would go to horror movies and uh, couldn't really afford a babysitter. So they would take me and um, uh, it just kind of always seemed like normal. You know, I never, uh, I never really questioned it. And um, uh, I just remember just kind of being drawn to those films. And uh, I don't know, somewhere in my, I don't know, probably around the age of seven, I started really getting into the monster type stuff and uh, and wanting to see all those movies and trying to catch as many on. It, we didn't have cable yet. Back then there were these movie channels. They were like a single box that had, it was like select TV on TV, the Z channel. Those were like the three big services that were available and we had select TV and the thing I loved the most was on Halloween every year, they would do a marathon. And that's where I really got caught up on a lot of the classic uh, horror uh, of that, of that seventies era, you know? And uh, as far as getting into it as a job, it, it you know, it, it all just kind of happened. It, it's none of it was super intentional. I just kept, doing things I loved and doors would open. And I mean, you know, people ask me, you know, the personal appearance agent thing, you know, how I started it and everything. And it was really an accident. It, it just, it kind of fell on my lap trying to help someone else out. And then I started thinking, well, and the funny thing is I was, I was not thinking in terms of making money or doing it as a business, I found out that through booking these celebrities into conventions that the promoter would fly me in and put me up, you know, in a hotel for the weekend and I'd get to go to the show for free. So as a fan, I was like, wait, Sign I can go to up. a show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can go to New York and, you know, the, you'll fly me there and I'll get a hotel room and I don't, I can just, you know, it was like, damn, uh, that was, yeah, I was already spending a ton of my money to go to these conventions locally. Uh, and th that was, that was what drew me in. And, uh, then suddenly as I kept building it, uh, it, it started to make money and that's, you know, 
kind of caught me off guard. Yeah, that's like, for example, when we were down at the, um, I mean, I'm, I mean, if you don't want to say the number, that's fine. But like when we were down at Mad Monster, I'll be honest with you, when I watched your stuff on YouTube, I really didn't, I had not seen all your videos. I didn't really know you were a personal appearance agent. I'd watched your Horrors Hollow Grounds mm -hmm. and some of your podcasts. And I know you'd mentioned some of that in there, but I, I just never really picked up on it. And then when we were down in Atlanta, and I noticed it seemed like that whole line, that whole wall that had the screencast, it had a James Jude Courtney, it had Diva Taylor, you had Alex Vincent, and then you came around the Terrifier side. And then when when Josh was telling me, he said, man, you know, Sean Clark's here. And I was like, no way. And I was like, really? I, said, I love his Halloween stuff he's done in the past. And I love the H45. And, the, and I've watched several YouTubers that you'd done the tour bus for the H45. And I said, man, I said, I wonder if he's taking up a list for H50, man, right now. I'm putting my name on this. <laughs> but but then I saw you running back and forth to all these tables. And I, and I think you told Josh that you was helping, helping out. And I was like, mm. then I started putting two and two together. And then we, of course, looked on YouTube and found out, well, he's an agent too. So do you, do you know how many you had at that one in Atlanta? Or is that something you, I mean, if you don't want to comment, I understand. But it was 11. You had, you had 11 there? 11 guests that were okay. mine, yeah. Wow. What's the most you've ever had at a show? <laughs> hmm. 60 probably oh wow. my gosh because i cannot imagine the amount of work required because a lot of people i've heard you say this before that <laughs> you think it's easy and all that, but i mean you were running your tail off going back yeah. and forth to each one of them it's a lot of work well normally you know i i kind of average you know i i think amongst especially the horror agents if you if anybody kind of pegs themselves that i i don't really peg myself that but i definitely think it's my forte and i'm kind of like when it comes to horror i'm like the number one guy kind of you right. know but uh um uh at a regular horror type convention i usually average somewhere between seven to, to ten guests a show um, but the w ones that, like I said, 60, that doesn't happen very often. Um, but that was, that was the Halloween convention. Cause I, I rep a large portion of the Halloween cast, you know, from the various right. films. So it might even have been more than 60. I'm just, I'm guessing based on the, the guest list. Um, but, um, yeah, on an average, you know, like, Next weekend, we're doing Steel City Comic Con, and I think I have. <laughs> I want to be there so bad, I can't. Let me see. How many do I have there? I'll just look. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So, um, you know, it, it, they are all different. You know, Creepy Con coming up in February one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You know, um, oh, wow. You know that, but you know I have a crew that works with me. You know, um, right. So, I I don't normally sit with a guest anymore and like do the table money and all that stuff. I, right. I have other people do that, and I kind of supervise. Like if something needs to get done, hey Sean, we need to do this. Then I'm free to to move about and handle business. You know that kind of thing. So do, does the agent? personal appearance manager do they handle all the money or is it the the convention bookers team do that or is that the agents that didn't normally do that or is it both it's, it's mostly the agents but it depends um it various shows do things differently um if you do a show overseas you almost never touch money like it's all done by the convention and then you have to deal with settling up with them at the end. Um, some of the bigger comic cons do a lot of pre-sale online. So they do tickets and stuff. So we then have to get reimbursed after the fact. Uh, there's a lot of that, but m most of this, like the, the horror cons in general, it's usually cash at the table. Some people take credit cards, some mm -hmm. The majority of them don't, but there's some that do. 
as cash is getting phased out, uh, unfortunately, um, a lot more people are starting to take, you know, Venmo or PayPal or or credit cards through a square or something like that. Yeah, I saw uh, <laughs> when we were in Charlotte at Mad Monster, uh, we met Doug Bradley, who was incredibly nice. Mm -hmm. And um, if you've already done this, I apologize for saying this. Uh, but Hellraiser three, which I know you, uh, we watched both of us watch your episode with your uh, Pillar of Souls. Uh, now you've got me. Now you've got me hooked on that website, and I'm looking at posters that are coming up. But um, that was filmed here in North Carolina in High Point and Greensboro. So down the road, yeah. if you ever come to Charlotte, if you hadn't already done it, that would be an awesome video to see you do that one. Yeah, I wanted to do it. I was kind of motivated to do it and then my buddy adam the woo did it oh um, yeah and, and i was kind of like damn it uh <laughs> but i i probably will you know at some point when i'm in that area try to knock it out yeah and i saw you done some stuff with um uh i'm a little bit older we're a little bit older than josh josh what you just hit 40 right yeah um but we saw the um stuff you did with trick or treat the sammy kerr trick or treat and mm -hmm. uh the filming locations it and then you also did the some of the halloween stuff and you know that same park and the same bridge was pretty cool how you pointed that yeah. out i was like i've got family that lives down near wilmington we go to wilmington you know maybe once a year every other year that's a beautiful area but now i got to take my camera and go to those areas that you brought up that was really cool Josh, yeah, I know yeah, you got some conventions, convention questions uh, as well, Josh. I know. Yeah. Um, so, like, you do you work with the the celebrity, like, on how much they charge, or do they come up with that, or is that something that they're, you know, I, I mean, how how is that decided? I don't know if that's something you can discuss, but. Yeah. Uh, well, first off, there is a an episode of the thing with two heads that I did with three other agents that do yeah, what I do. Yeah. You yeah. saw it? We, yeah. we go through a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Um, if we didn't touch on that part, um, uh, regardless, I'll, I'll answer your question. It, I can only speak for myself. Okay. Um, I can't speak for what other agents do. I feel that my clients are the most affordable out there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I try to be as fan friendly as possible. Um, I also try to not charge additional stuff for like, you know, uh, a pop figure is this much, a poster is this much, you know, premium item costs more. I've always been of the mindset that a autograph is an autograph. I don't care if you're putting it on this or if you're putting it on the back of this, it should cost the same in my opinion. Now, with that said, I work for them, right? So if, you know, at the end of the day, the celebrity has final say, all I can do is make a suggestion. So if you see a client of mine that is upcharging for a pop or something like that, believe me, it wasn't my suggestion. Right, right. <laughs> you know, it, it, I, I, all I can do is say, hey, look, this is where I think you should be, you mm -hmm. know, and um and I, and I, you know, when a client comes to me and says, Hey, I think I need to raise my prices. Mm -hmm. I'll sit back and I'll, and I have the same conversation every time I'll go, look right now. Are you happy with the money you're making? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, blah, blah, blah. But I think we can do more. Okay. Well, take into consideration that if you raise your price, those people that were buying maybe multiples from you, maybe they do. Oh, he's only 30 bucks. Okay. Let, I'm going to get two things signed. Well, now you're 40 bucks. They might go, mm, okay, I'll just get one. Well, you just lost $20 there, you know, it, 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 and guess what? It's, it's not as fun when you're not that busy. You know, when you're sitting at a table with nobody in front of you, it don't look cool. It, it, it's not fun. Right. When you have a big line and you're busy, that's fun. Higher your prices are, the less you're going to be busy. So keep that in mind too. You have more fun when you're busier. So I, I really, that's the philosophy I try to, to instill in my clients. But again, at the end of the day, I got to do what they say. So oh, I totally understandable. Yeah. I ran into that at mad monster. 
Um, I'm not talking bad about him. I like Carl Weathers. Uh, I was Carl about Weathers. to say Carl Weathers. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it was nice meeting the guy, but yeah. I had a really cool figure that I wanted signed. I didn't realize that he was going to charge $300 for that because he considered it, like you said, a premium item. 300 And his normal autograph. That's insane. On a, That's his, insane. His normal autograph that I got was eighty on a picture. I would have paid eighty, no problem on the on the on the item. Um, but yeah, the guy told me. I said I have this because he he wanted to see what I wanted to sign. The guy that was helping him, and I said mm. I have this, and yeah, he's like, oh, that's a premium. We consider that a premium item. It's three hundred dollars, and I was like, I can't pay that. <laughs> so yeah. you know, I had a budget. I I know it's the same thing now. He only went up twenty dollars. Like in, in August, we saw, and if he's your again, if he's your client, I apologize, Sean, but this it's the facts of the facts. Mm -hmm. And and maybe he's gonna go up this to this price going forward. But like Kane Hodder, I saw him in um He's not. Okay, so Kane Hodder was in Charlotte at Mad Monster. I took three items to have him sign. All of them were signed to my son's name because everything I do, I got a 12-year-old son, I've got him into horror. He likes the OG stuff. So everything I have signed, I haven't put his name on. I'm not reselling it. I'm 52 mm. years old. I don't know how much more time I got, but I want everything to go to him. And I want him to have these experiences uh, with these, you know, the movie stars that he loves to see. But I took three items, had them signed. And don't get me wrong. Kane Hunter probably spent 10 minutes with us. He was talking to my son. He was, you know, there was some burn. Like my dad was burned. He was burned. He was bullied. Anthony was bullied, my son. So he spent some quality time with us, probably 10 minutes. I mean, I know people were rolling their eyes behind us, but he was spending time with us. Um, mm -hmm. But I gave him $180 for, you know, three autographs real quick. But I did notice I had a Mad Monster photo of uh, me and my son and him, and he had went up to $80. And I was blown away with how few people were in his line in Atlanta which I know it's a big screen thing. Nev, Matthew, but, Skeet, true, Jamie. but you, yeah. But one thing, it's funny you bring it up because Kane always has a huge line, and and it's one of those things that we talk about. It's like, man, like who at this point doesn't have his autograph? He does so many shows, and you yeah. know, and it, 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 I mean, he, you know, he's a fan favorite. Mm -hmm. I was shocked when I saw yeah. how dead his table was in Atlanta and I, and I was, you know, I didn't know about the price raise. I didn't look at his, I just happened to walk by him several times and I'm like, damn, you know, yeah. what's going on. He charged what 40 yeah. for a photo, a selfie, right? Jocelyn? Cause you got, yeah. a, you got a, you got a selfie with him. I, I already have an autograph, so I didn't need that, but I was like, I just want a selfie with the guy that was 40 or whatever. But um, I mean, Mike, Mike, got an autograph with him, like he said, in Charlotte. And Mike said the line was big for him there. And, and when we were in Charlotte in August, he had by far, him and Doug Bradley had the two longest lines. And probably Kane's was by far the, the furthest. It was going down and then out the hallway and down another hallway. And he could not stay called up. I mean, but yeah. he was spending time with people. But I could not believe at this one, which I, I knew the screencast there was going to be big. Um but even price wise, Neb was like really reasonable. I thought so. I thought all three of them were really reasonable. I think they're all three of them are your clients, but yep. they were really reasonable in their price. And they just, it just, it, it's only $20. But in my mind, it was like, okay, I've got, if I got $800, $700, $1,000 I'm going to spend that weekend, do I want to spend one tenth of it on one autograph, which I've already got three autographs of them, or go up to a Diva Taylor? who was as sweet as molasses talking to me and my son and, and give her $40 of it. I'd much rather do that. You know, now Kane was 80 just for an autograph. It was 80 for an autograph, 40 for a selfie, or was it a hundred for a I combo? I don't remember the combo. I just remember I paid 40 for a selfie, but I got three autographs in August and it was 60, 60 and 60. It was no, uh, now I will say this when, when we started talking, um, he said, he said, sir, do you mind if I take a picture with your son? And I was like, sure. He, and I said, how much? He said, no cost. He said, I want to take the picture with your son. And I was like, man, that's awesome. So my son jumped up early with Kane and took a picture of him. He didn't charge us anything. Um, 
and you know my son you know really enjoyed it which i'd already spent 150 on a photo op with him as well so yeah. he, you know we spent three or four hundred dollars just just with Kane otter in charlotte um hmm. any other convention sometimes questions you, you know sometimes people you know have to find out the hard way that raising a price isn't a good idea you know who knows if he'll stick at that price or maybe the next next show he'll be back down but that's another thing i bring up to my clients like that's not a good look you know you, you, you don't want to be having this conversation uh, fans having this conversation pointing out you know he went up he went down it it's it's like it, it's unfortunately yeah not not a good look right I yeah mean, and i'm not i'm not talking bad on him no, i don't know if his agent no, you know. told him to do that or if he even has he doesn't an have an agent know. he doesn't have he doesn't an agent. have an he books it he books himself yeah does doug bradley do that as well yes i thought he did since he was running credit cards himself on the square i, I thought <laughs> yeah but i've heard i've heard doug bradley has charged that same price for many years for three or four years right no longer than that i heard has he yeah i think so he was he was only 40 uh 40 dollars in charlotte uh for yeah and he did the free selfies with them as well so that's the thing you know guy like that you know i don't i don't even know if he acts anymore you know he's living off of the legacy of pinhead right you want you want to you want it to have return value you want you want to be able to keep getting invited back to all these different conventions right. if you if you price yourself out eventually people are going to start uh stop asking you to come back you know right i i, so. I was listening to one of your podcasts and i heard you say that like that some people like you said you run the the loop or whatever and then sometimes they don't get asked back and they're like why exactly. am i not asked back and you're like hey man like this or this or this this is why you know I heard well you yeah there's the there's only there's only certain people that have that return value kane hodder is one of them robert anglin is one of them doug bradley's yeah. one of them you know nick castle guys that they played those icons yep they they are you know obviously there's been a lot of jasons but kane seems to be the fan favorite yeah. um not my favorite jason uh, sorry kane love you but uh I mean, not my, you know, Ted White's always going to be my favorite, but, um, he was good but again. He's to the day Kane dies, he's going to be able to do conventions as Jason and people will come because they keep making merchandise of the character and stuff like that. Now, if you're Victor victim number eight from Friday 13th, part 12, uh, your return value isn't going to be so much, you know, right. those hardcore fans are going to want to get you on their poster or whatever, because they're completists. But once they've done that, they see you come back around next show. They'll be like, Oh, I got them already. You know, it's not that iconic role, you know? So yeah, that's yeah. what I mean about doing the circuit. And then kind of right. some of these guys get addicted to it. And then they're, then they start showing up at every swap meet and flea market out there, you know? Yeah, I, I told, and then that just, um, that, that totally just dilutes their brand, like, you know, totally. And I mean, I, 100%, 100%. Right. Like, there's one guy that I think does that a lot, which I know I, I think it, that may be Sean's client. So you may not want to say his name. No, go ahead. Tell me. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, uh, Ari Lehman from, not my client. No, he's not he, your client. Okay. He yeah. literally, he literally, like, I've just seen, I mean, just a ton of stuff signed by him and it's like dang man i, I hey listen i man, yeah mike got suckered into buying a bunch of it um but no it's just like man i feel like i mean i understand he's the first jason and i i get that um yeah. but man he signs a ton of stuff so it's just like yeah wow. him, and, him and kane hotter man they do not they do <laughs> not get along yeah unless unless it's not a surprising. friendly behind the scenes uh, jest on each other but oh my gosh you know the thing with that is it's like you know there's guys like ari who not only have run the circuit over and over and over again but then on top of it you know he's got the band first jason so he's yeah. he's pounding that into a whole nother circuit you know he's he's milking every avenue possible um 
which hey god bless them man if you know sure. if you, if, yeah i mean make, people make people got to make a living yeah, yeah. No doubt. um but at the same time you know there's gonna be a point when you have an opportunity to book you know someone that barely does conventions or him you know he's gonna be the you know well we could give you a table if you want to show up kind of guy you know um, it, it, it becomes to, it comes to a point where the promoter doesn't want to come out of pocket expense wise to bring in someone that does tons and tons of conventions. That's sure. why, like you said, you don't want to dilute your brand. Right. You want to keep yourself at a level where the promoters still want you. You right. know what I mean? Right, right. No doubt. I, I, I understand. Yeah, totally makes sense for sure. Um, so, anything else you want to ask about conventions, Mike? Or oh man, I got a ton. No. <laughs> uh, I want to so, talk. Mo- I want to talk movies with the man himself here, Sean, in right. a second. I, yeah, I want to ask one more thing. So, okay. mm-hmm. um, what what what's some things that if you ever show up at conventions and you're like, this isn't good? Like, do you ever? I mean, you don't have to mention a convention, but like, have you like showed up and you're like, oh man, this is going to be an interesting convention? Well, um. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. And, you know, usually, you know, I I get in, I try to get in there the night before and look at the layout and, you know, everything and just make sure as I can walk into a room and I was like, I know what kind of business my clients do. And I can immediately go, hey, this is not a good spot to put Matthew Lillard in. Cause you're going to need line control. It's going to run in front of all these vendors. They're going to get pissed off, blah, blah. You know, you have to really be able to think these things out. Um, there was a show recently that I complained to the promoter and then his next show, he does multiple cities. His next show, he did the same thing again. And it's like, dude, what are you doing? And it was, he was separating the celebrities It was like a celebrity vendors, a celebrity vendors. So he was, all the celebrities were, which I get the idea of, I do agree with the concept of mixing them in to where you have a constant flow. Because if you have a celebrity only area, once those fans are tired of seeing those people, they're going to leave that area and and you're going to lose the foot traffic. So I, I do believe in mixing it up to an extent, but he was separating cast members. So you had one person from this film over here and his cast mate is down the row. You know, they should be next to each other. They're in the same movie. You know, they're friends. Right. They want to talk. They Because, you, you know, when you sit there, if the show dies and you're bored, you want to be able to chat with your friend. Maybe a fan wants to get a photo of the two of you together. And now he's way over there. Mm-hmm. You, you know, it, it was like, I was like, what are you doing, man? Why are you separate? They should be sitting next to each other. And it, And he did it constantly and it was so frustrating um that's an issue and then he's like well i pro you know i promised a wall space to this vendor he paid for it and i can't move him and that it just turned to a bunch of dumb shit yeah and i was just like man Thanks. you know you, you, i don't know it, some yeah. some promoters uh, you know like agents have egos and they think they know how it should be done this is my show I'll run it the way I want to run it. And it's like, okay, well, if we're not happy with how you run it, we're not going to be coming back. So keep that in mind, you know? Right. Yep. Yeah. That's, um, that's, you know, yeah, that's totally I, true. I'm such an easy going dude. I really am. I mean, I am one of the easiest people. I, I, know, I, I rarely get hot. I mean, you got to really do something stupid to, to make me lose my shit. Um, (laughs) uh, and if I get to that point, you don't want to be around me, but, but I rarely, you know, get rattled. Uh, I'm just, I'm very easygoing, not demanding. It's just like, I'm pretty simple really, you know? And I think that's what a lot of my clients appreciate is that level headedness and just kind of like, you know, straightforward, blunt, you know, and not a diva, not, not like, oh, you know, the lighting's bad right here. We need to, you know, but you know, I'm, you know, I'm pretty simple yeah. and easy going. Yeah. So. Um, I was listening to a, a podcast or an interview that you did and I thought it was interesting. You told a story about, um, uh, Robert Patrick about how he had like a curtain up and then he came and asked yeah. you, Hey man, why am I getting busy? And you're like, 
you look like an asshole. <laughs> I thought that yeah. was, I mean, it's yeah. true. I mean, if I walked by somebody and they had a curtain up, I'd be like, who does this dude think he is? Like it, it's one I, I've only been to one, but I've watched videos on him on YouTube. And, you know, like at Mad Monster, the one I went to in Atlanta, everybody was visible. I mean, except for Peter yeah. Chris. I know he was in his own thing, and that's probably for I think that was for health reasons or whatever it was. Um, but COVID every- protocol, like they made you put a mask on and and spray your hands before you went in. It was it was a little over the top, but did you did but, you, you know, know whatever? Did you go, I did in, go in and talk to him? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I'm a yeah, Kiss Mike, fan, as you can see. Yeah, Mike is a big <laughs> Kiss fan too, and he was so up in the air. He's like, "Man, I don't know if I want to put a mask on and do all." This I stuff, was fifty so. fifty because I mean, me and my son from the age of three and four singing Beth in yeah. the car with each other hiding down, and I do know he's getting older and he's you know some health issues. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> he got yeah, the picture, I'll man. do it. But uh. You know, next one we go to, if he's there, I'll probably go ahead and do it this time. Because we've already gotten some of these other autographs, as you mentioned earlier, that you may not get the next time you go. Um, yeah, and I mean, and Peter ain't no spring chicken, man. You know, he ain't getting any this younger. Is what, the last, the last weekend they're doing their last two shows in New York, supposedly? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow yeah. night's the final show. Yeah, final show. believe me, it, I was really on the fence about going. But I, I went twice during this tour had backstage meet and greets VIP right up against the stage. Uh, the, those two experiences were so perfect. I wouldn't want to end it yeah. in a bad seat, you know, just to be there on the final night. I'll watch it on the pay-per-view, <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure it, you won't even need to get the pay-per-view. It's going to be all over YouTube all night. You know, you're going to be able to watch a thousand different angles. So, right, right, right. Yeah, it's um, one of the I've probably seen that band in concert more them and probably Guns N' Roses and Motley Crue, probably the most in my life. Um, I've seen Ozzy I think three times too, um, but I've seen probably Kiss eleven or twelve times if you add them all up, starting in the early eighties. Um, I don't know how I, many I seen times a I've seen years them. Though. I don't know how many times I've seen them, but at least that many. Yeah, you know, that's one of the bands that early on, I think I told Josh this. I remember from a young age, me personally, um, The Exorcist in the 70s and Jaws. We were going to the beach the next day and I saw Jaws and it freaked me out because it was on HBO. But I remember Kiss being on HBO and with the live concert um, mm-hmm. at a young age and that whole makeup and the demon and the blood and the fire, it kind of really threw you know, gas on the fire for me at a young age of love, loving, you know, horror type stuff. Cause kiss was kind of, you know, Alice Cooper, all those, I mean, together that theatrical, you know, King diamond in the eighties, um, that whole theatrical type horror together. I just loved that. You know, I loved it. Yeah. Um, I do have one or one. We got to hurry up here so we can get into the, the <laughs> other movies here, but, yeah. um, yeah. Other conventions. So Josh has been twice. I've been once. We've only been no. to Mad Monster. I've only twice. been once. Yeah, I said. Did I say you once? Me twice. No, you said back. All right. Either way. All right, Josh. Let me give you this right here, buddy. Um, <laughs> from a fan's perspective, Sean, and you've been you know many years going to these conventions because even before you became, you know, an, an agent, you went because I've seen a lot of your videos and stuff and pictures of you back when you had the long hair and. Um, mm-hmm. for us, if we were going to try to pick three to five conventions outside of Mad Monster, because Mad Monsters is big on the East Coast, I, I live in you know, <laughs> and a half in Charlotte. What are five conventions, three to five conventions that you think, um, for somebody new getting into this is like a must see? Hey, you got to go check this one out. If, you, if you're really getting into conventions, just, this mm-hmm. is like the premiere. No, number one is Horror Hound Cincinnati. Okay. Um, that's my favorite show. Uh, Texas Frightmare in Dallas. Texas Frightmare Weekend. Uh, another amazing show. Um, Monster Mania. Uh, Cherry Hill, New Jersey is their is kind of like their flagship show. Um, Monster Palooza in. Uh, in California it's in uh, Pasadena I'd go they do two shows they do Monster Palooza which is the big one Pasadena then they do Son of Monster Palooza which is in Burbank Uh, it's a very different show because it's very art and sort of special effect 
uh, makeup geared. Uh, so you, you get to see a lot of shit that you wouldn't see at other shows. Um, they do a big museum where famous artists do original pieces and they put movie props on display and it, it's just really cool. Um, I know I'm going to get somebody's going to be pissed at me for uh, for uh, leaving them Forgetting. out. No, I'm, I'm just doing horror conventions. I'm not doing comic right. cons, right? That's horror. right. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of what would the last one be. Uh, I'm bouncing a few. Of my there's another really good one in California called Mid Midsummer Scream which is more geared towards the haunt industry, mm. but it still has all the good stuff of a regular horror convention, like guests and, and merchandise and stuff, but it's very haunt centric. Uh, it's also a big presentation. I, I really like that one. Um, that's my, I guess that's five, but honorable mentions would probably be like Connecticut horror fest, uh, up and coming one silver scream, which the ice nine kills runs uh astronomicon is fun in michigan yeah um let me look i'm gonna go forget somebody and look at my list of things what about the uh, the one in, the one in florida is, is it i mean has oh, it only been out for a year or two you mean spookala yeah, yeah. that i'm glad you brought that's that's one i forgot my bad spookala is is great i mean they're is up and Orlando coming or tampa it's in tampa okay. um the, you know, there's smaller shows like Full Moon Horror and Tattoo Fest in Nashville is fun. Uh, uh, um, Frightmare in the Falls, which is in Niagara Falls, is fun. Living Dead Weekend in Monroeville is always fun. Uh, we get, I'm doing some honorable... Oh, God, I can't believe I left out Flashback Weekend in Chicago. Flashback Weekend oh, in wow. Chicago is, is, uh, is an awesome show. Okay. I, I, See, so yeah, this is why I need to look at this list because uh, Scarefest, <laughs> Scarefest in Kentucky, another one. I, I, I've been, re I've been really looking into that one because you know that's not that I live in Michigan, so I'm mm -hmm. not super far. The Astronomicon you mentioned, like every year yeah. that comes up, I'm always got something going on and I can't go to it, but I've been wanting to because it normally has a yeah. decent list of people going. It's, it's a little, it's a, it's, it's not full-on horror it's right. it's horror and pop culture they do a lot of wrestlers and right and uh um but it's still you know it's a good time it's the same crew that runs silver scream okay so it's the guys that manage that band twisted right so it's kind of you know it's that same same group but it, it but it's a fun show um but yeah those i just threw out a bunch of options there Okay, thank you. Appreciate yeah, that's, that. That's awesome because we'll definitely look them up because I think next year, you know, we met Josh and I met we, we our families or my family and the, and he the, we like cruising we like going on cruise ships, but there's actually one in uh, in Baltimore, Maryland next year, Monster Mania in Baltimore, right, Josh? We're talking about the same weekend we're so. going on a, we're going on a cruise, so we're thinking about going a couple of days early, go to the Monster Mania in, in Maryland, and. Mm. Um, and then turn around and get on a cruise ship and cruise for a week. So mm -hmm. I think about yeah, that. The, their Maryland, their Maryland show is fun. It, it, I prefer their Cherry Hill one. Um, but they, they are moving to a brand new location, which I hear is really nice. Um, uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what the, the new place is like. Uh, Cause I guess the old hotel is being torn down. So, um, and they've been there for a long time. And there used to be another show before they went in there. It was a show called uh, Horror Find. And that show went under. And then Dave went in and brought Monster Mania into that same location. So there's been a horror convention in that same spot. God, going back to the 90s, I think. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So now it's... it's uh, it's going to be interesting to, you know, see the new spot, but I'm sure it'll be great. Dave puts on a great show and um, I'm sure it's going to be good. I've already confirmed some people for that one. So I'll probably be there. 